The 25th Hour Radio Show. I'm speaking with Dr. Aziza Glass, one of the stars of Nat Geo Wild's Vet School, which is airing at the moment on Saturdays at 9 p.m. Central Time. Dr. Glass, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. So, so let's go back in time a little bit, Dr. Glass. At what point in your life did you realize that being a veterinarian was the career path you were going to choose, and what led you to that decision? I think that I decided to become a veterinarian pretty late compared to most of my classmates. I didn't decide until probably the, the late part of my sophomore year in college. Uh, more early junior year. I'm not exactly sure. It's just a little uh, vague. But uh, at that time, a lot of the different upperclassmen that I had come to uh, develop a relationship with were in the process of applying to vet school. And I always knew what a veterinarian was. I just never actually thought of myself as becoming one. And I knew that I wanted to go to graduate school and, and become Dr. Glass. But I always thought that I was going to take the PhD route. And when I started to really think of myself and envision myself in that position and saying, you know what, I like animals. I want to know what makes them uh, tick, know all about the animal body inside and out and how to treat them, I decided to go for it. Um, So, yeah. You know, my next question, and you kind of already answered this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Did you ever have a backup plan in case you got into school and and thought, eh, maybe this is not what I want to do? You know, just for curiosity's sake, in an alternate universe, what would you do besides being a doctor? Oh, gosh. Well, I always knew that I wanted to do some type of I knew I wanted to go to graduate school, and I knew that it was going to involve animals somehow. And I was really drawn to the study of animal behavior. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, when I was applying to vet school, I was very interested in uh, animal behavior when it comes to uh, family-type structures, like you see in, uh, in meerkats or in elephants or something like that. And that's what I was going to try to focus on. But I was really at this crossroads where I had to decide if I was going to do PhD or DVM. And I applied to both programs and I told myself, well, whichever one I hear back from first is probably the one I'm going to end up going with. So (laughs) Cornell beat out everybody else by letting me know pretty much like the first week in January. (laughs) okay well i guess that's a done deal well that's cool thanks for sharing that you know we're talking about the real world here and you're you're part of this great little series on nat geo wild called vet school how did you actually become a part of this series was there an audition process or was it like hey guess what you know you're going to be on camera oh it was a very long process so um in that regard it's interesting to see the behind the scenes of what it takes from an idea to go through development and then actually seeing it come to fruition and then the final product being, well, what is aired on TV. I was in my summer going into my my senior year, and I got an email from one of the administrators saying that there was this idea that had been talked about between Cornell and Uh, a production company doing a reality type show and if I was interested in doing a Skype interview. And at first I was very, you know, apprehensive because reality show doesn't exactly have the best connotation. Mm -hmm. But uh, knowing that it wasn't like an open cast call and it was something that was going through the university and through the College of Vet Medicine made me more comfortable. And uh, it made me... It made me more comfortable in the fact that it, that the content would be more quality instead of yeah. uh, drama in hand, and I decided to move forward and go with go through with it. So um, I did the Skype interview. I was a part of the sizzle reel, which is the teaser that is used by the production company to shop to the network. And next day, I know they say that Nat Geo Wow that picked it up that we're going to be filming and then there's cameras everywhere and from there, <laughs> it's 
<laughs> and being shown on TV. So it's a, it's an interesting process, but it, it wasn't it, it wasn't horrible. <laughs> now, now did being filmed all the time take getting used to? I mean, at the time, like you said, you were still in school. It seems like that would kind of add to the pressure. I, I won't lie and say that it didn't add to the pressure because you are very conscious, especially at the beginning, you're conscious about the fact that there are cameras there, that you are essentially representing your college and your university. Uh, you're representing your family <laughs> back home. You don't want to say anything dumb. Uh, you want to make sure that everything that you say is perfect and correct. And you also have people who aren't on the show, whether it's other students or whatever, are saying, well, uh, like looking at you, see what you're doing. Are they, are they trying to get you to mess up? Or are, they, are they messing with you? <laughs> Huh? Are they? Are they? Are your friends that who's that's not on the camera? Are they messing with you? Do they try to get you to laugh or anything like that? Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> and it, it's not. It may not even be when I'm on camera, but uh, especially when I'm off and I might be walking down the hallway, somebody might say, "Oh, you know, excuse the superstar coming down the hallway." You know, <laughs> and I bet. You, know, you just have to take all of that in stride. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so. You know, for those listening right now who might not know. Uh, about the series Vet School, in your own words, what's it about? Okay, so the series Vet School is really a docu series. It's a bird's eye look into what it takes to be a veterinarian. Different study, the hard work over the four year process that uh, that a student goes through in order to get from a, a, an inspiring undergrad to what you end up seeing when you take your dog to the vet, uh, your, your veterinarian. Uh, it shows the contrast between first years who are learning the basics from learning how to handle an animal to what actually constitutes a, a complete physical exam, what a physical exam is for different species. And you fast forward to the fourth years or the seniors where you see us actually handle real clients, real patients, real cases, and applying all that knowledge that we've learned in the, in the previous three years to an uh, actual clinical setting within this teaching hospital that's at Cornell. So there's a lot of inherent, <laughs> the, the show inherently has drama because it's medicine. <laughs> you really don't have to script anything in. And you see the, the valleys and the, uh, the joyous moments as well. Um, all the different things, the emotional uh, attachment that we might have to animals, the, um, the how we have to remain um, emotionally detached at times in order to get the job done if it's a pretty sad case. You see all of the different aspects of what it becomes to be veterinarian. Now, this show has been on for a couple of weeks now, and I know this is kind of out of left field, but I'm curious to know, did you have a premiere party with all your friends and family? I imagine uh, this to be a pretty big deal for someone. Oh, well, I on the, on the very first episode, I watched it with a couple of my sisters. We were just hanging out, uh, and you know, we kept it small. Uh, but it was I didn't feel the need to do a huge premiere party mm -hmm. because I wasn't in the first episode. <laughs> so it was just yeah. like, we'll watch it just because. But for the second episode, I was one of the major storylines. And I did have a nice viewing party uh, back in Houston, which is where I'm from. And uh, everybody was, was <laughs> there was a lot of tearjerker moments. Uh -huh. And people kept on asking me during the commercials, what's going to happen to Mel? You got <laughs> you to watch, watch it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, now, vet school keeps to the tradition of, of Nat Geo Wild being it's an educational nonfiction program. What do you hope the viewers get out of watching this uh, particular series? What do you hope they learn? I hope that people develop a newfound respect of their veterinarians. I think that a lot of times people downplay the, the work 
and the um, the academic um, breadth of knowledge that we have to know in order to be a veterinarian. Uh, people ask me all the time, and, and this was even at Cornell, an Ivy League institution. People are asking me, oh, well, what's a veterinarian? Is that like a two-year program? Is that like a master's? Yeah. And I said, no, it's a, I'm a, I will be a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's just for animals. <laughs> it's a simple concept, but I hope, hopefully, with seeing the, the type of, the wide range of veterinary medicine that is available, like cardiology, like radiology, dermatology, surgery, uh, neurology, all these different terms that are only associated with human medicine. Hopefully, as they see the show, they see that while veterinarians are doing this too, they have to learn about all of this too. Wow, they're actually doing medicine. They're I, they're doctors. <laughs> like, yes, I'm glad you finally had the epiphany. Uh, and hopefully, they'll they'll have a, a new a new respect for not only their veterinarian but also for their profession. And I also think that it's great to have young uh, young veterinarians to be televised because it's inspiring to even younger veterinarians to be uh, who just needed that extra push, whether they're nine years old and they've always liked animals to being a sophomore in college and they're watching the show and they're saying, oh, wow, this is really cool. I can't tear my eyes away from the TV screen. This is what I want to do. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, do now. Yeah. Now, now, do you do social media or have a website you would like to direct the listeners to to learn more about yourself or, or vet school? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, I have my own website, azizaglass.com. So that's A-Z-I-Z-A -Z -Z -A, glass, like a drinking glass, dot com. And also, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at Aziza Glass. And that's it. You'll see uh, a lot of different blog posts that I've been doing, uh, some about veterinary medicine, others about things like cooking and fashion, all my different interests. And on Instagram, I do a weekly hashtag Ask Aziza where people submit questions, whether it's about veterinary medicine or vet school or even things as, uh, as random as like hair tips. <laughs> and I answer this. All right. That's cool. Well, Dr. Glass, is there anything you would like to add that I might have left out before we sign off? Uh, I also would like to say that I, I, I really don't take lightly the, um, the position that I am in right now um, with being a part of this show. There's been so many text messages or Facebook messages that I've gotten from people that I've never met who have told me that their children who are five, <laughs> five years old or nine or ten have been looking at the show and want, they can't wait to see what Dr. Aziza is doing next. Oh, that's and great, huh? That is the, that's the best compliment that I could ever get. I bet. And, and I want to make sure that I continue to use my position as being Dr. Glass to help that next generation of, of, of young children to get into STEM and science-related fields. Well, again, you can check out Vet School on Nat Geo Wild, Saturdays at 9 p.m. Central. Dr. Glass, uh, once again, thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me again. Radio, Radio show. show.